For the past four months, I've been following a group of Holland College students their creation of a comic book. From before the very first line was sketched onto a page, to the final product hitting the shelves, I've been talking to these six artists about the process of creating a comic book. But, before we get to that, we have to go back. Way back. What this whole project is? Um, so it's just uh, it's a collaboration project um, between the various different media arts programs here at Holland College. Um, so they kind of just picked two people from every program that had an interest in comic books or comic book art and uh, we're putting together a nice little book that'll be about 16 pages long and it's gonna have a story, an individual story from everybody. Uh, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. So, so think of it in terms of it's an anthology book. I wanted to do, it's based in about 1940s Europe and it's a child's perspective on the war. Yeah. Do you think that as a graphic design student you have an advantage over some of the other programs? I think as a former graduate of the Fundamental Art program and being a current student in graphic design it gives me a little bit more of an idea of what would be more appealing and how to use my time more effectively. Well, it starts off with something similar to this, just a, like a thumbnail basically. And then you take it, you measure your template and you start drawing something similar to this. And then I just, after doing three of, three of these, I put them all together on here. And once they're together, you get to do stuff like this, kind of entering into other frames. And Amy. It's a video of a graphic designer doing kind of like a TED talk and she was saying how as a creative person you don't want to listen to people who whose opinions are kind of brainless and have no meaning and you don't want to be a slug, you want to have a brain, you want to use your brain and um, I thought that it kind of could translate to what the programs kind of stand for, like people who have opinions and valid opinions and valid ideas and unique ideas. So I definitely wasn't a fan of the Urban Dictionary definition because it had nothing to do with us, but I thought it was a good icebreaker because you were there, you saw how awkward everyone was, mm -hmm. and it kind of got everybody laughing and comfortable, so I thought having that definition was kind of a funny thing that happened. What did you think of the name Gutter Trash? I thought that was hilarious and the whole meaning to it and everything was awesome and Sandy's a genius for thinking of that. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, I'm Seth McLean, and uh, I'm a fundamental art student, first year. Well, my ideas for the project were I kind of wanted to tell a story and do it my own way without being too comic booky. Uh, well, I originally started that project for something else, and then I figured it was it looked perfect for what I wanted to do. Because usually I worked with just pieces with like faces and different weird things like that. So to tell a story was definitely a task, but it wasn't that bad after I got the hang of it. Oh, I like your ears. I did three different pieces and they're both three different stories and I wanted them all to be completely different so using the same characters though. Each story is like a different dream I guess of 
um, a couple, and there, there's a departure, a greeting, and a rival, which is three different dreams a person has. So it'll make more sense when you see it all together. But yeah. Where did the idea for your comic book come from? Um. Well, I, I wrote the lines originally for this, and then I turned it into a spoken word song that I posted online, and then I cut it around and then pieced it together, and then I was like, well, I kind of want to draw this story. So I used the writing I took to draw out the story and make these stories, and writing for spoken word music, and then it turned into this. Reading my own words kind of drew what I was thinking and stuff. Comics came about uh, as one of the ideas for a title, and it was sort of a secondary title. But I like it because it's not just comics, it, it, like as in comics, yeah. it's also like a co-mix or a cooperative okay. mixture. before she was born by a gypsy and my big debate was whether or not the curse was going to be real or not and the curse is that her eyes can kill it's kind of like a fairy tale okay yeah i like um fantasy and fairy tale kind of stuff magic mm -hmm. and um, curses and things so it's um yeah it's kind of just like a magical fairy tale story I guess the best part has probably been the research that I've got to do into gypsies and all the like mythology and stuff behind them. And I learned a lot about um, gypsy culture, which was really cool. I, I, I like the learning side of it more than anything and then trying to integrate what you've learned into your work so that there's like some truth to it too. This is my first comic book. I've never done anything like this. I've never written a story and um, illustrated it sequentially either. Sequential art's very, very new to me. Um, it was a book I read actually when I was a kid, and I can't remember the name of it or the author, um, but it was just a boy who was dealing his whole life with this idea that he had a power that he didn't really have, and uh, that's kind of where the whole story came from. It's funny, ideas just... So I, I really like plots and making them thicker and thicker and thicker. It was really hard to cut it down to, um, to four pages, um, and I didn't pick like a little ditty kind of story. It's like a, it's like a fairy tale. It's got to open and close and have a, a middle in there somewhere. So yeah, um, working with four pages was well, it was a challenge, but it was good. <laughs> I'm not a big writer, right? I'm an artist, so trying to write the script has been um, tough. That's what, yeah. My name is Brad Seymour. Um, I'm taking the video game art and animation program at Holland College. And uh, I've always uh, I've always loved comic books, probably since I was uh, eight, I think is when I got my first comic book, and ever since then, 
It's all I've wanted to do. So uh, my comic book is gonna focus on a character called Nightshade. It's a female character, um, kind of like Batman, I guess. She's like a a regular human who's trained for ten plus years in various martial arts and stuff like that after a tragedy when she was a teenager. So. She kind of goes out into the city to kind of rid the wrongs that people, the bad guys, got away with. It's actually the name that I've had for a character that I probably created when I was 17 or 18. Um, it was a male character at the time, though, and I figured Nightshade sounded a little too feminine for a male character. And then when I was doing this project, I was just kind of brainstorming a bunch of ideas and. I kind of had some like sci-fi stuff or fantasy stuff, but I kind of just wanted to stick with the superhero. And, and so the first version of the character, actually, I, uh, I based it on my fiance, and I was going with a more like a, a Wonder Woman type character, like someone who could fly and was like strong like Superman, had no problem picking up like 10 cars at a time. And then there's just the, like, this is the planning stages right here. So this is kind of like the rough, the rough ideas for all four pages. Some of them stay fairly close to what you sketched out originally, like here. I had originally thought to have her wake up at 11.34, but that almost seemed too natural if you were gonna be out fighting crime till five o'clock in the morning. It's a lot of work, because usually it's broken down, like one person has a separate job. Um, but yeah, dude, we have to do everything. The deadlines creep up like crazy though. It's just like last, Three weeks ago, we had our first meeting, and now tomorrow we gotta have our finished like pencil pages in. Show them. Can I send a photo? Yeah. You can Make. put them all. As I said, should we just like spread them out? Yeah, good idea. Walk around. Walk around. Yeah. Who uh, who gets I to do this again yeah, next year? Dunno. Sandy will pick it up. It's better be someone that sticks up to have it in the issue. Onward and upward. So, yeah. We'll get that and then we'll look you guys in the lightning bolt first time. <laughs> Alright, so what's next? What's next? I am what's next. It's yeah. all me now. Yeah. So, so when it's in the realm of the editor. So. Yeah, I take it all in and I'm going to put it all together and then by the end of the month, so April 1st, we'll get everyone together again. Yeah. And we'll look through it and that's when I'll send it off that day. To get printed. Yeah. We'll do up a dummy and print it out. Yeah, and then a couple of weeks later, we'll get them in and that's when we'll be having the book signing. Nadia Goody, I'm second year graphic design. I'm art director, so... I do all the schedules and the meetings and I keep everyone on track because and then I'll be like putting together the comic book so once everyone's done with their artwork so it'll be next week um, I'll take it all in and I'll scan it and I'll put it all into the book and then I'll lay it all out and design the comic book and then that's when we send it to print. Okay. So that's my job. I used to spend a lot of time photoshopping the work back together because you'd have to scan it. Okay. Um, when they first give it to you because it's rather big and then once you get them all together then you have to edit the cut like white and black contrasts and then you then there's type to do so like we had to do all the lettering okay. originally we're gonna go with one typeface but then um, we decided to yeah ones that more suited the story or that okay. suited their handwriting and then Amy and Megan chose their own to suit their hand story or okay. their story not their hand story it's coming along. We had a few little bumps because some people didn't have a lot of time to do the work, so we had to work around that. But we're coming along good. It's going to be different. It's going to be six students showing six different styles of artwork and six different stories. So we're setting up a book signing at um, Lightning Bolt, the comic book by Subway. And all the artists and everyone involved, I think, are going to be invited. And then it's like we're going to invite all their family and friends and like sell the comic books and do signings and stuff. Okay, so what do you hope the reaction to be like? I hope it's a good turnout. I think it's going to be like we have 
different kids involved, so they'll bring all their family and friends, and it's it's something new, so I hope it brings in a crowd. Hi, I'm Peter Murphy, and I draw comic books to make film and study animation. The reason I got into animation is I had created a character called the Good Machine, which is a combination of the Iron Giant and Samurai Jack, and it's been it's been this is what has been driving me for the past couple of years. So. When, Sandy suggested four pages for a comic book. I thought maybe I could do up a quickie origin for the character, introduce him to people, and go from one medium, which is the comic book page, and bring it into animation. I was trying to figure out something that would resonate with children. It can't be overly complicated. The machine from another world who came to help, you know, you, know, you want the good machine, so you know immediately, you know, what he's going to do in this world. And I'm trying to create something almost iconic, so that, you know, the origin of Superman, everyone knows the origin of Batman, everyone knows. So with this one, I just want so people go, oh yeah, that's, yeah, I read that story. That, that's, how, that's how we came to be. I uh, broke into comic books back in 1990, thereabouts, and comic books were different back then. Plus, I was also inspired by an earlier, um, an earlier age of cartoonists, and that's what I bring to it. My style is kind of a throwback. I did the first panel, I realized, wow, this is going to look really striking. So I decided to do the story on the, uh, on the gray paper. So the old robot built him to right the wrongs, right? So the world's tearing itself apart. Now this is me cheating. He's, he's got the crank for the matter transmitter. Our hero appears in space and as the world detonates, he's flying towards us away from the explosion. And that's how we begin the story. I've written like the next four episodes are already written for him. Uh, and the next is him floating through space and there's a comet and he gets drawn along by the comet, thrown off course, and he lands on this world, lands in the snow of the mountains. The first thing he encounters is a bunch of monks who are owls that are meditating high in the mountains. When spring comes, the owls leave so he ventures out into the world. I want to give that moment of peace before he starts on his adventures. Uh, I've learned one thing from the late Joe Kubert. The story comes from the words. Know the story before you start drawing. It's like know your song well before you start singing. My name is Charles Evan Williams. If you didn't know, you should know because I say it to myself all the time. My comic book is called Ed Keniston, The Master of Life. So what the comic book demonstrates is my knowledge of stress. And uh, it also, so I'm using Ed Keniston as my way of speaking to the audience of what stress looks like, how it feels like, and what would the world be like without it. But ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to make a, a comics or a comic or something like that, and now I did. My inspirations for my artwork, it's really come from my dream of wanting to be better. Like, I mean, ever since I was, I was, ever, I was younger, there was always these, these people that are stronger, who are always faster, always more successful, and more uh, good with women than, than, of course, I am. And, and, I've, and therefore, that's why I guess I kind of got into superhero comics and other comics like uh, the Bone series and Archie and stuff. I, I want to make my own characters. I, wanna, I want to uh, make, it, uh, let, make my humor be known and I want people to, uh, to see who Charles, Charles Edwin Williams is. It, when the whole comics was laid out at the last speech, I'm thinking, wow, these are much more detailed, these are much more complicated, I wish I could draw like that. Your talent, give it to me. My favorite panel that I, I probably had to say is the one where Ed Kennison is trying to talk to the girl, he's like, hey Sally, uh, uh, we do want to go out, and she's like, no. I didn't say anything, no. So you can just hear what I'm thinking? Yes. And what number am I thinking? Ten. Darn it. It just, it just seems so uh, pathetic and it just seems uh, so, something that's stressful for a lot of uh, teenage guys. I mean, one of my big problems in life is I have this bad feeling that, man, I should just shut up. Nobody wants to hear what I have to Nobody say. Nobody wants to listen. I, I just always get this impression that when I'm talking to someone, they're like, shut up, Charlie. I don't care. Shut up. You, you there is nothing important that you have to say. You, there is nothing that you have that could add to the subject that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Just leave me alone. That's always the impression that I get in front of people. Is it a problem for you to say I like the idea of being called peace? Oh, and are you, are you comics or are you complex with projects?
necessary. They're, they're different. I know they're different. So this is the front cover here, and then this is the back cover, so. Wow, Pete's looks, uh, it's awesome. pretty good there. I just love how completely different everybody is. It sounds really, really cool to look at. Katie did the lettering in Charles's, and we yes. actually picked up a font that looked like your hand lettering. Tried so to find something. Tried to that find something that looked as close to it as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you magnify it to it, you can kind of see it. Because you had some actual print in here. This is your hand lettering. We so went we over picked it. a font that was as close to it as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used the grayscale on the balloons because yours didn't have a lot of contrast to it. So the grayscale on the balloons creates a, a nice contrast. Yeah, and again, we use the grayscale box with the white letter just because of the contrast. Yeah. Yeah. And then Amy used a, a font called Gory because she wanted to have that head with Gory to sort of look. So uh, when are we going to be set, uh, going to be giving you an autograph? We're looking at about <laughs> two weeks. All right. Yeah. So we're going to wait for the friend of so a week, hopefully. We'll give you all the heads up. We printed a hundred copies, and we got them printed locally. One of the big things that they said the college, you know, lacked in was was marketing towards the programs. Mm -hmm. We had a powwow and coming up with ideas of, you know, a, as instructors as to what we could do. And I and I have always bounced around the idea of uh, a collective doing a comic book. Mm -hmm. a, you know, a collective of students doing a comic book. The first story is, of course, done by, by uh, Brad, mm -hmm. the superhero guy. He's scratching such cool surfaces. Um, with polish mm -hmm. and with experience, Brad, I believe, could break it into the big guys. Seth is a wonderful artist, and I hope he keeps up with it, or even if his direction goes in a whole different place or what have you, he does have a really nice talent for storytelling. I mean, this is probably one of the more subdued kind of um, offbeat stories that's found in the mm -hmm. whole book, but it, it it has a drama to it, which is really hard to do. I know, like, for example, Megan and Amy, while they haven't gotten published before, they're really into comic books, mm -hmm. you know, like, and they would trade comic books and they would read all sorts of stuff. Uh, Amy's... Um, work is whimsical and charming. She's a huge fan of Edward Gorey, we know that. Like, but the ones that I kind of drew from from this were um, Tim Malloy and um, Edward Gorey, who are two pretty influential people to me. And it kind of is reflective in the style and that she chooses to do this, but it's so uniquely hers. Yeah. And, and she's another one, like, you know, watch out for this one. Uh, I believe that uh, her future in comic books is, is just beginning. Mm -hmm. Megan Handerhand, she's, she's uh, told, uh, probably one of the creepiest stories. Her usage of black and white is really nice. Like mm -hmm. she, she can compose with black and white. And she did all the lettering herself. And she composed it all herself. And it's just a gorgeous designed piece. And she's one that keep an eye out for her. She is, she's got a future in comic mm -hmm. books. Charlie's another one. He's a dynamic artist. He, uh, he this, he, you don't know this, but he he proceeds with he has binders and binders full of just stories and comics and stuff like that. And you know, once he gets refined and once his his work starts developing even further, uh, I think he's going to actually you're going to start seeing him you know doing either a web comic or do something of that nature. Pete Murphy. Um, you know, Pete's studying video game uh, animation right mm -hmm. now, but he, but his comic stuff is so fun and so dynamic. I mean, this is such a, a cool spark in the whole book, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you're turning the page and all of a sudden you've got your encounter in this black page. And did you notice that it's all set in space, so it just is so fitting, yeah. you know? We are, and I'm saying this for the record, mm -hmm. we are the only college in the Maritime offers this sort of thing.
Like to finally be at the end of it all. It feels good. Yeah? yeah. I, I gotta say, I am feeling really powerful behind this desk right now. Mm -hmm. Almost godlike in a way. Yeah. I'm actually really excited right now. It's yeah. like the first time that people get to other people inside of our oh, yeah. group that made the book yeah. finally get to see it. So. I'm super pumped. This is awesome. I'm glad everyone almost is here. Pete's outside. Um, it's good that everyone's got their family coming in to see the comic. I'm great. I'm like really pumped for everyone to see it. Yeah. I haven't done a signing. Last time me and Sandy did a signing together was back in the days of subterranean comic books when we published comic books here on the island back in the 90s. Oh yeah, okay. So it's been somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 years since they did a signing for old man Carruthers there. Yeah. I think it's great. I love when uh, independent creators get together and put out new stuff, especially local stuff. It's great to see. Mm -hmm. It's like, why wait to do something, right? When you can do it yourself and you've got the drive and ambition, just get out there and do it, right? Like. There's no point waiting until you're done hauling college or just do it now. Yeah. Like because when, when did we start this? It was like in January. Yeah, right? yeah, it was a while ago. So here it is April. And here we have these published books that are created by this row of creatives. Um, what of nothing. What yeah. of nothing. And I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that it will continue on. That this will be a yearly thing. Because I think that, you know, when you look at when you look at uh, comic books and, and you realize that all of our disciplines that we offer at the college are all connected with comic books in some weird thread way. Yeah. And you know, it's just nice to see it not being ignored anymore. Have you watched him like work on it or have you seen him work on it at all? Yes, at home. Yeah. yeah. A little frustration, but yeah. the end product is awesome. What's it what's it feel like to see your son at a at a book signing? Proud. Yeah. Um, great. What about you? What do you think of it? Well, uh, you know, I'm quite excited that my uh, my son has found a path in life and that uh -huh. he's doing something he enjoys doing and I think he's well set for future success. Great. That's, that's that's what I like to see. I like to see that there's people that think uh, think uh, that I have a future and think that I'm uh, hopeful, especially my parents. It was certainly uh, a great deal for them to uh, see me having my own comic out. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Signing was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was uh, like I've been to a couple of conventions and it's kind of I've been on the other side of the table, like being somebody that comes up and hands you the thing to sign. But uh, yeah, it was pretty cool being on the other side this time, getting, getting to be the person that's actually signing something. 
books. Um, we're giving it up by the creators, so we okay. the creators will take the books and they can sell them themselves. Oh. So, you know, so so this way everybody kind of gets an even stab for making you know, equal shares. Of That's people. awesome. Or they can give them away. You know, it's a, you know it's up to them. Yeah. But uh, the eight dollar cost, we broke it down uh, with the eight creators, and including Katie, who did all the lettering, or most of the lettering. She so did three comics. Uh, uh, she did a lot. You know? So she sort of included in the creative process. So a buck each. So every yeah. comic book that's sold, they get a buck. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so, that's awesome. So. Charlie's and she did the stitching for um, Katie's and the shading yep. stuff. Yep. And yeah, she did actually. Yeah, I just gotta give her some credit, I guess. Yeah, she helped me out a lot because, like, that would have been like two extra days of work that, like, I didn't Because you did Seth's lettering, didn't you? Yeah, I did Seth's lettering and Pete's lettering. You, did you do Pete's? Yeah. And um, Brad's lettering. Yeah. Uh, it went really good, actually. Um, everyone that came got more than one comic when they did, and then everyone got to take some extra so that family and friends that didn't come could have some. But yeah, I found it went really well. Good. So it was a good feeling. It was like getting reacquainted with an old friend. Yeah. Well, I think it went really well. We got a lot of people in and <laughs> had fun being there. Yeah. <laughs> good. For the past four months, I've been following a group of Holland College students through their creation of a comic book. From before the very first line was sketched onto a page, to the final product hitting the shelves, I've been talking to Brad, Peter, Amy, Megan, Seth, and Charlie about the process of creating a comic book. Six creative and unique individuals. Some are quirky, some are sweet, some have a lifetime of experience, while others are just getting on their feet. Some aren't what they seem, and others are starting to captivate their dreams. designer doing kind of like a TED talk and she was saying how as a creative person you don't want to listen to people who whose opinions are kind of brainless and have no meaning and you don't want to be a slug you want to have a brain you want to use your brain and um, I thought that it kind of could translate to what the programs kind of stand for, like people who have opinions and valid opinions and valid ideas and unique ideas. I definitely wasn't a fan of the Urban Dictionary definition because it had nothing to do with that. 
us, but I thought it was a good icebreaker because you're there, you saw how awkward everyone was, mm -hmm. and it kind of got everybody laughing and comfortable. So I thought having that donation was kind of a funny thing that happened. What did you think of the name Gutter Trash? I thought that was hilarious and the whole meaning to it and everything was awesome and Sandy's a genius for thinking of that. Mm -hmm. so. uh, I'm Seth McLean and uh, I'm a fundamental art student, first year. Well my ideas for the project were I kind of wanted to tell a story and do it my own way without being too comic booky. Uh, well I originally started that project for something else and then I figured it was it looked perfect for what I wanted to do because usually I worked with just pieces with like faces and different weird things like that. So to tell a story was definitely a task, but it wasn't that bad after I got the hang of it. For the past four months, I've been following a group of Holland College students their creation of a comic book. From before the very first line was sketched onto a page to the final product hitting the shelves, I've been talking to these six artists about the process of creating a comic book. But before we get to that, we have to go back way back. Can you explain what this whole project is? Um, so it's just uh, it's a collaboration project um, between the various different media arts programs here at Holland College. Um, so they kind of just picked two people from every program that had an interest in comic books or comic book art and uh, we're putting together a nice little book that'll be about 16 pages long and it's going to have a story, an individual story from everybody. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. So, so think of it in terms of, it's an anthology book, right? So it's, you know, the genre is not specific. I did three different pieces and they're both three different stories and I wanted them all to be completely different so using the same characters though. Each story is like a different dream I guess of um, a couple and there, there's a departure, a greeting and a rival which is three different dreams a person has so it'll make more sense when you see it all together but yeah. Where did the idea for your comic book come from? Um, well, I, I wrote the lines originally for this, and then I turned it into a spoken word song that I posted online, and then I cut it around and then pieced it together, and then I was like, well, I kind of want to draw this story. So I used the writing I took to draw out the story and make these stories, and writing for spoken word music, and then it turned into this. Reading my own words kind of drew what I was thinking and stuff. don't have the name Gutter anymore. It's just going to be called Comics with an X. Sandy's really stuck on that. It's not here, but it's probably going to be still on lunch. What do you think about the new name? Comics? Yes. Yeah. I like it. It has, it's like one word. It's I wanted to do, it's based in about 1940s Europe and it's a child's perspective on the war. Yeah. Do you think that as a graphic design student you have an advantage over some of the other programs? I think as a former graduate of the Fundamental Art program and being a current student in graphic design, it gives me a little bit more of an idea of what would be more appealing and how to use my time more effectively. Well, it starts off with something similar to this, just a, like a thumbnail basically. Mm -hmm. And then you take it, you measure your template, and you start drawing something similar to this. Mm -hmm. And then I just, after doing three of 